three, two, one. Yippee-ki-yay, mother... Welcome to another edition of Yippie Kaye Mother Podcast. What's going on, you mother podcasters? Yo, hey, yo, yo. Up, yo. I object. I just want to say one thing. This is the show. There is no other show. This is the show. <laughs> there is no other show. Sean, what are we talking about on this show? We are talking about courtroom dramas, and I brought my favorite courtroom drama of all time. The Verdict from 1982, starring Paul Newman. It was directed by Sidney Lumet, who is a master of this kind of piece, even though it's set in Boston as opposed to New York. And it has a script by David Mamet, who was early in his screenwriting career. I think the only other theatrical feature he had done is The Postman Always Rings Twice. I could be wrong. But to me, this is just a magnificent film. And the cinematography by Andre um, Barkoviak, I guess, is, is magnificent as well. And this the, the film has, is a rare, has a rare distinction. There are only two films I can say this about that I actually like Lindsay Krauss in this movie. Ah, what's the and, second one? And the other one is Slapshot, where she pays the um, one guy's wife. After She's pretty while, good in that one too. After a while, I began to really despise her. <laughs> you don't like House her game. You don't House like her. Games? Is that what it's called? House of Games. Yeah, she's House in games. that. You yeah, don't like great. her in The Insider, where her role is to say, "Oh, Al Pacino, man, that sucks." I'm sorry, brother. She's so good. <laughs> she she was big... his wife, right? She was the wife in The Insider. Yes, she was yeah, Will yeah. Bergman's wife. They didn't give yeah. her a lot to do, though. No, they didn't. Yeah. And she was great in House of Games. I don't know why you didn't like that. And... Well, she seems. I love her. I think she's great. I think she is. But did you see Desperate Hours? No. With Mickey Rourke? Yeah. Yeah. That was bad. Is she bad? Uh, There's a lot of lot of good good folks in this film. Um, Yeah. This is a masterpiece of character. And I just want to say this is a true courtroom drama. Yeah. This, if you say courtroom drama, this one has to be absolutely one of the top. And and I want to point out that. um, Though it may not be a courtroom drama, Sidney Lumet's first feature was 12 Angry Men, which, you know, some people would consider a courtroom drama since it involves the law. It's close. Yeah. Yeah. Which was yes, another very story. intense film. All so right. So why don't I you give us the... up, yeah, okay. yeah, sum it up. So this film is about a, a washed up alcoholic, once promising lawyer played by Paul Newman, you know, a real departure in this film for him. And, you know, basically, he's really pathetic. I would even be angry at him. He's, he's essentially an ambulance chaser. He tries to drum up, um, drum up business by going to every funeral he can find and handing the um, bereaved families his business card. And, uh, but he has one friend, played by Jack Warden, who hands him the perfect Mickey. case. Mick. Mickey. Hands him the perfect case. It's, a, it's about a... It's from the family of a young woman who had gone in to have a baby at a Catholic-owned hospital in Boston. She was given the wrong anesthetic and, you know, was brain damaged. So she's in a coma in a vegetative state. And the thing is, Mickey tells him, you know, everybody wants to settle. You know, the family wants to settle. The church wants to settle. The hospital wants to settle. <coughs> everybody wants to settle. Oh, he has to go in and say, okay, this is how much we want. How much are you willing to give? And when he gets the offer, it's four times what the family wanted. <coughs> but the problem is, despite throwing his life away, despite being a pathetic character, when he goes to the nursing home where the victim is laying, he takes some pictures of her, and he is Polaroid. so Polaroid in a, in a fantastic scene. He is so moved by what he sees that he decides that this is his hill to die on, that he's going to give her justice. And um, it's not a decision that anyone approves of. You know, the family, the, the, the woman's brother-in-law actually punches him, wants to beat the crap out of him, that he didn't take the offer. I mean, even when he tries to be a good lawyer, he's bad because he doesn't discuss the decision-making with the family who would have objected. And Mickey's like, um, what the hell are you doing? 
He goes, I can win this case. He goes, you've already won, you won it. When they give you money, that means you win. You know, it's like, what are you going to do? Bring her back to life? You know, so I mean, and the judge is furious at him, played by Milo Shea, a great performance. And um, this is a film, uh, what you don't see as much today is that it's got a lot of great supporting characters. And I left out a major one is Charlotte Rampings in it, who's like, plays a woman who's new to Boston, he meets at a bar and he becomes involved with, you know, who encourages him and builds him up throughout the film. But, you know, as um, Jim Thompson, the novelist said about the screenplay of any movie, it's always things, the one plot is themes, things aren't as they seem. And she's not what she pretends. To well, and you either. forgot to mention James Mason as Ed Concan. Oh James my Mason. God! This is like fucking. What did he say? What did Jack Warden say? He's the he's fucking the prince, prince of darkness. Fucking prince of darkness. <laughs> so, yeah. And he is. He. I couldn't imagine anyone else in this role. Ah, oh, he was so seething the, and so good. He's so evil. The only time I've ever seen him more evil was when he was the vampire's familiar in um, that TV movie version of Salem's Lot. But you know he is. Wasn't he in Perfect Lolita? In the, yeah, yeah, but that's a different kind of sleazy. Dial M for murder? No, he wasn't. Was James Mason? I thought dog? he was in that, wasn't he? That's the... Ray Milan. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And what was it? Five. What was it, What was the movie we watched? Five Men Out or um, what was the movie? Last, oh, no, I know what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, the, the Hitchcock. Left. No, no. Um, odd, no odd, odd Man, man Out. Odd man, man Out. Yeah, Odd mm. Man Out. The, um, right. So, hey, uh, Last of Sheila. Last of Shield, yeah, he was either. Yeah, so. And he's good at comedy. What was he in? He was in Georgie Girl, too. We were, he was, he was in Heaven Can Wait. Well, his whole crew, that whole, uh, all these lawyers he had in his, his yeah. big conference room, they're all, you know, this this is like such, this was such David and Goliath, uh, and everything fell wrong for Frank Galvin. Everything, you know, the, the, the doctor that was going to be the, the guy. Joe Seneca. Was, Joe, Joe Seneca, Seneca was greatness. Yeah, uh, just all, like, it, the mammoth this has got to be like i was saying the william goldman book i read this thing went through so many iterations so many writers and so many like robert uh, redford was supposed to play him but didn't want to play him the way newman did which was as the alcoholic you didn't want to play him as an alcoholic didn't want to yeah know, what's wanted, the what's the, you know yeah what's the and point? frank sinatra wanted to do it for nothing he would have done it for nothing he said yeah i yeah. think frank sinatra probably would have been good in this role it would have been probably. interesting yeah you know, and but, Cary Grant too. But I got to say, Grant. this is um, I saw this film at the theaters when it came out, and uh, with, with my um, girlfriend at the time, and also, you know, um, screenwriter director Dan Rosen from Baltimore, who later su sued Elizabeth Banks over the film um, <laughs> Walk of Shame, and um, which we discussed in the previous podcast. But um, I love this film, and this was actually a very good period for Paul Newman. Because I remember going to the movies to see Fort Apache, The Bronx. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Absence of Malice, which was another um, great kind of revenge movie, you know, where, you know, of course, he isn't murdering people, but, you know, he full, you know, he plays a great character, and Sally Fields was in that one. But this is, this is the fa my favorite of it, you know. Um, my name is Murphy, and I'm Irish, and I'm really kind of familiar with alcoholics. I, in my family, I will admit there had been a few high functioning alcoholics and kind of professional careers who were highly respected and all. And, you know, Newman wasn't playing this guy like who's that one guy um, that always plays drunks, Foster Brooks or something. You know, here's a guy who really, I really think got playing a drunk guy that is trying to be capable, you know, really well. I mean, there's that like look in his eyes like, you know, that I'd seen in like, okay, I'll say my father was kind of an alcoholic, but very highly respected in this field. And it's funny, at where he worked, I'm like, how, you know, he goes into work drunk every day. Doesn't that bother people? They're like, your father is so good at this job. Drunk, he's still head and shoulders over everyone else here. I'm like, wow. But it's sort of like, you know, you get that look like, yeah, I'm good at this, but kind of where am I? You know what I mean? There's just like, yeah, but he kind of Newman lost wasn't his eye. Newman wasn't good at it. I mean, there's that he one scene good where at it. he couldn't yeah. even drink the shot. He had to put it down on the table and sip it out yeah. of the thing. I mean, yeah, well, he wasn't he's, good at drinking. No, but he's taking the time. He's a terrible lawyer in a sense. Um, 
he really he comes up with stuff, but he, he he's good at foresee. pinball. Well, well not until the end. He got right. good at pinball. He got good. I, at I, both I, of them, both sides did things that would have gone them both disbarred. Yeah, so, both exactly. sides. Yeah. So that but, was kind of interesting. But you know what? I love this movie from the very first shot. You know, the title sequence is just him playing. He's in pinball. He's in shadow. He's in front of a window. It's lit outside. And he's in shadow. The pinball machine's in shadow. And he's just playing it. And for a while, it's just still as the opening credits come. You know, um, Richard Zanuck and Daryl and Brown and the producers. And when the title comes up, it starts to push in a little. And he's just playing it. And at the end, he just reaches over, grabs a beer, and drink it. But it's such a beautiful shot that sets the mood. And, like, the whole tone, color tone of the movie is all these browns and deep browns. It's depressing. Outside, it's always kind it's of It's Boston snowy. in winter. That's yeah. what Boston it, in winter's like. It's like Yeah, I mean, it really it. captures it. I didn't, I've yeah. only been to Boston a few times, but I bet this really captures Boston in winter. You know, it's just... Um, it's just magnificent. And I want to say one thing about the producer, um, Richard Zanuck. You know, if I may. Do you still have the bell? No, just say what you... But did you okay. read one of your scripts? Ding. Richard, Richard Zanuck. You read one of your scripts? Uh, yes, and you know what he said about me? He said it was an amazing script. No, he said I had a great eye for dialogue. So great that's from eye, Richard Zanuck. A great eye for dialogue. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a great eye for he meant it in a positive way. Oh, he doesn't he had oh, a sure. he didn't have a great ear for dialogue. <laughs> it didn't sound like that, but all right. Well he was reading it. Uh, so um no they, he really liked my script. It was the um fourth Mrs. Jones. So um you know, um I'm anxious to hear. I I believe one at least one member of this podcast. I, I want to get more into the plot later because it does have some interesting twists and turns, but I believe one member of this podcast has not actually seen this film until now. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I have never seen the verdict, which is kind of surprising even to me. Um, I was kind of like, hmm, I've never sat down and watched the verdict. Um, yeah, it was, you know, obviously, you know, I think this might be the most courtroomy of all the courtroom dramas we've reviewed the last month and, and a half. Um, <clears throat> but it is, it is really great. Um, I really do like it. Um, it is one of those things, though, where, you know, I, I, I eventually, it, it's funny, it's, it's as I'm watching the movie and as I'm going through this with Frank, right, you know, there is that part of me that, like, I start to get to the point where, oh, and by the way, I knew Charlotte Rampling was bad news. I knew she was in with the defense. No, I just got, really? Uh, right from the beginning? Uh, and from their second meeting, yeah. The second okay. time she sees him in the bar, I was like, oh, yeah, she's, she's a plant. Um, and, uh, but... But the funny thing was, it's like each time something else comes up, there was a little part of me that was like, how do you not take this? You're you're beaten seven ways to Sunday. Your superstar lawyer or your superstar witness has disappeared. They got to him. They got to him. You have this. You have incontrovertible proof that they are playing. They're playing. They're they're playing dirty pool. Right. You know, and you could get a mistrial. You could. And then you can go back to them and pin them to the wall for a much bigger settlement, right? Um, and so I just, that was my only problem with this film, really, is that when they figure that out, that she's part of the thing, that they don't take that and they don't get the mistrial. And therefore, to, and don't get me wrong, that's not nearly as exciting and dramatic as that great sequence um, where uh, the nurse who, you know, is... Uh, she made a photocopy of it because she knew and all that kind of stuff. Disallowed. Disallowed. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did love that part because I, I've always thought that I love the fact that this movie, and I don't want to jump straight to the end, but I'm going to. Um, I love the fact that this movie basically says, you know, a judge can tell people to ignore things, but if it's that powerful, there's no way you could ignore it. Well, the Monsignor, that great scene where the Monsignor said, where the guy says, yes, uh, Concanon disabled, nothing, nothing it was beautiful. And she says, well, did you believe her? Yes, that was And great. is that look like, mm, it's He's over. Like, he knew yeah. it was over. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, and, so like, uh, the, and, and the, the, the doctor that they brought in, mm -hmm. the old African-American guy, yeah. He said, you'll be surprised people, you know, people have a way of, you know, he nailed have it. more faith. Hearing out yeah. the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, uh, yeah, but I mean, it was just, and obviously just from top to bottom, every, every performance was solid. 
Like there was not a, like the guy who played the, uh, the husband of the sister, right? Yeah, yeah. He was fantastic. Yeah. Like I he, keep thinking I've seen him in other stuff, but I can't remember. He what. looks like he's a one Kevin. Of those guys, he that looks you like know a when you see yeah, him, he's right, done yeah, a lot I've of stuff. But he definitely stuff. looked like a Kevin from Boston. I mean, yeah. the, 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 <laughs> the leather jacket and the hat yeah. that he had, the whole deal. But yeah, the and, anger. <laughs> exactly, just the anger the, yeah. the hand life has dealt him. Right, know? he's a blue collar guy in yeah. Boston. You know. Yeah. Um, but no, just a great, great, great movie and a great way to kind of finish up our uh, our look at um, our look at courtroom dramas. But I will say this, like I said, that was probably the one thing that irked me. Obviously, it's not dramatic or anything, but I, I just don't. It, it's like he has done dumb things throughout. He, that's that's why I defend it, because yeah. he's made literally he's made so many mistakes that a real lawyer wouldn't do. Right. You know, and it's just stupid pride. You know, well, there's it's just there's, stupidity. But there's also these great scenes where he has that he has that confrontation with the judge and and the other lawyer when the judge pulls him into the chambers. It's when he calls that judge out, right? right. He, says, he says, You're, you're a, a bag, bag man, man the right? guys downtown. And then he does that thing where he walks out and he does that little sidestep as he gets out, like, Oh, I should go back in there and apologize. Yeah. Because he knew he knew he flew off the handle. Yeah. Did you, you notice know? how they were always trying to feed him alcohol? Like the judge comes over to his coffee cup and pours from a little bottle. And no, that's just thing. tea. He's pouring him tea or something. That's all. No, that he had tea. He was pouring him. No, something that was from... that was coffee or tea. No, yeah. come on. no. Um. Anyway, go ahead, Chris. Keep going. If you, if you're no, done. I was just going to say that kind of sums it up for me. You know, it's terrific. Um, from top to bottom. You know, it's great. It was a great. You movie. know, I will say when I saw this with an audience, they were totally engaged, and when the verdict came in. They practically cheered. I think some people did. Did you, you read know? that Mamet didn't have the verdict? Yeah, he wanted it to be no just, verdict, and he just walks no out verdict, of the courtroom. Just walks and you out. don't know as an audience. Right. Can you imagine that? No, because that would have been. Well, oh. the producer's the one that changed that. said, you got to have. You got oh, was to. was Lumet? That scene where they, they sweep no, Lumet, down. Lumet a, said it. Sweep you got to have Paul a verdict. Newman. Oh, my God. Yeah, when that and camera you mind, down. Can you mind, can we make it higher than we, you know. Oh my God! That's and when the judge, people, the judge that's is like, when the people eh, you have to use your good judgment, right? What a douche that judge was! A douche. yeah, he was. I so, know. I mean, that's Great the thing. Stuff. It's a little bit. It's a little bit like everybody's evil except for Paul Newman and his team, right? Everybody. He's got the snidely whiplash. Even the judge is working against him and take you know uh, asking questions to the witnesses when he shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, if you're gonna blow my case, let me yeah. do it. Yeah, <laughs> don't do it for me. So, but I've watched this film over and over and over. It's I watched those, it three times. This it's week. one of those I use when I edit because I know every, every line and everything that's going to happen. I just adore this film. I just think it's, uh, yeah, one of the best. Uh, Drew, you haven't said anything yet. I've never seen this movie either. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, I'm not like avoiding it or anything. I like Paul Newman very much and I've seen a bunch of uh, Sidney Lumet movies and I liked his book, uh, Making Movies, where he talked about his career, which was um, really kind of interesting stuff. And he talked a lot about the kind of choices that he made as a director. Um, because I'd never seen it before, I don't, um, I didn't, I, I mean, it's a movie. I figured he's going to win but I didn't know which uh, direction it was going to go. And I thought that some of the things that the movie did were kind of uh, interesting. Like no one follows the law at all, including the jury, which clearly didn't comply with the order to disregard. That's like a Baltimore and, jury today. Yeah, kind of. Well, I mean, a Baltimore jury, even back to David Simon writing about them, you know, that they'll bring somebody in who's been charged with serious crimes. And if you get enough grandmothers on the jury, they'll be like, well, he looks nice. Let's give him another chance. Have you ever been on a jury? Have you ever sat in a I've jury? Been, I've actually been up to voir dire. I've never been uh, actually put on a jury. So you cannot, no, as much you as you, you cannot disregard when of you Of course see you something. can't. Of course so can't. Well, I've been on many juries and they. So why? I don't think started. that's the jury's fault. That's just the way. Oh, no, no I'm not the... faulting the jury. But okay. the law yeah. is that like this shouldn't have been included, which really falls on the judge. The judge shouldn't have included it. Right. I also thought it was interesting that um, he has, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, Grubler, whatever the superstar, the doctor who said Gruber. like they gave her the wrong anesthetic. And then he disappears and he isn't available for the case because he's on an island or something. Um, and that he would have been wrong because that's not why she died. I thought that was actually kind of a, an interesting twist that uh, 
uh, she died because she had eaten much more recently than Within the paperwork I think they would have given her a different anesthetic because she had eaten. Well, well they're supposed they're supposed to wait, but the idea yeah, was like right. It, the idea was that you know, like they made this mistake, and they actually made another horrendous mistake that also you know almost killed her. She might as well be dead. And I actually thought, that, as I was waiting for some sort of big legal twist, and the big legal twists are basically that like the right thing happened, even though people didn't follow the law, and I'm fine with that. But I thought the judge was going to say that you know the copy can't be admitted. Remember because we have the original on file. I thought he was going to say something like, we don't have the original because the original was altered to what we have in the file as the original. The one that says nine isn't actually the original because the original said one on it. But he basically just then went down the path of pretend you never heard any of this, which as you just said, Ralph, I mean, you, I mean, you can't do right. that. It's ridiculous. Right. It's impossible. But, um, you know, it's got, a, it's got a great cast. I think, is that our second Sidney Lumet movie? Because we did murder on the Orient Express. I yes, it's only our second. Else. It's only our second one. I mean, he's done, you know, so many, so many great oh films. Where, he's a legend. Legend. Yeah, I no would man. love to bring hopefully the right time on Prince of the City. Oh, and, Prince of the Cities. Yeah, that, that's great. And yeah. um, you know, Dog Day Afternoon and Serpico and you know, all kinds of all kinds of great classic stuff. But um, you know, it was it was entertaining. I I also it's our second Jack Warden film in like three weeks or something. Yeah, but, he's always um, good. Come on, that line he does about the. the, the I hate to say this, but the line about the the African American doctor, because it's refreshing. It's not a a Jewish doctor up there. Yeah, that was touching, <laughs> especially this it's week. Like, that was super I know. It's touching. just I know. It's, he's good. It's not touching. He's Pete good. Jack Warden always looked at him. Yeah, it's a great performance. Yeah, great performance. And yeah. you know, I mean, I I my wife will very much disagree with this assessment. I'm a big fan of David Mamet. And it's interesting that this is a David Mamet script because it doesn't sound like a David Mamet. No, script. it does not. It doesn't it does have not. the the repetition. The pattern, no, no profanity. Pattern. There is. That this kind is of the stuff. case. This only like well, that. that, this is that case. line. This is, this is the, only the case. case. This is the only. Yeah, that. But I mean, it's not like you know, it's not like almost any other movie that he's done, um, which has it's so. It's like you know, you can listen to a scene from a movie and you can go. Yeah, that's Mamet. Yeah, that's Sorkin. You can tell certain things, and when they don't, I don't think that he, like, uh, you know, stopped being himself in any way because it was it's still it was I thought a pretty tightly plotted story, and I think some of the stuff, like you said, Chris, like yeah, clearly Charlotte Rampling was trouble. Um, I also think that um, I read a review. I cannot remember who it was, but they basically said they didn't think the movie was worthy, quite worthy, of the Rembrandt style of um cinematography i don't know that it was worthy or not but the movie is really quite striking looking it's really really beautiful the way that they use the shadows and and i think that was all locations too those weren't it was all in new yeah they shot it all in new york York. and and all the real locations and i mean look i mean i love paul newman his eyes alone i i wasn't sure if i'd really buy him as a drunk because his eyes are so powerful and alive because he was putting eye drops into the whole movie yeah, it was really, it was very impressive. So I'm, I'm, I'm. Mean, this is one of those movies. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad this gave me an excuse to see it. It's a movie that I've never, you know, not wanted to see. You just, you know, you can't see everything. And now I'm glad that I saw it. So I didn't, I didn't love it, but I'm glad that I saw it. And Debbie would keep walking in, and she'd be out doing something, come back, and she's like, "Are you watching that movie again?" I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm watching it." And you know what? They say it's cliche that it wins. But the ending is a little more nuanced than that, you know, you know, because it doesn't end with the big thing like the this that the comatose woman's sister hugging him or this or that or news conference. I mean, a guard congratulates. No, it's them. it's 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 Paul Newman's reaction and Jack right. Warden's reaction, right? Where Jack looks up and he does that. <laughs> that is the movie right there, and then everybody congratulating him. Yeah, it's he's coming down the that, whole, end, that whole like you're in your workplace and these are the people that you work with. And Come like, on, that's hey, such a good man. ending with the phone ringing nice. and him not picking it up. Yeah, but it's yeah, sort of like that's ending. not that's not a triumph. You know what I mean? It's not. No, no, it's he, not cliche. That's one of the. Um, there's so many brilliant little bits in this movie. And that's that, David Mamet. You talk about the patter of David Mamet, but it's his it's his little lines he drops in every now and again, and little things like you know just acting things that are happen. But I mean, I when he hits her, when he hits her, joke. When, the, which oh, joke? When he, it's like I heard. So I hear there's a bar where you go in for fifty cents. They give you a beer, a lunch, and then they take you in the back and they get you laid. 
Oh, really? You've heard of the bar? There's a bar? Yeah. Have you ever been there? No, but my sister has. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> right. Now, what were you going to say? Um, I forget. You took me off the track with that joke because the other joke is I cut myself shaving in my eyes. Yeah, my out of my out of my John, you haven't said anything. You've, I know. Well, you like I mean, I, listen. I love this movie. I, I, it's one of these movies that when it's when it comes on, I, I watch it from wherever it's at, especially at the courtroom scenes at the end, because I think it's played by everybody brilliantly. Uh, I think uh, th- was this a year of Gandhi? By the way, this is a year of Gandhi. Yeah, that's everything, that's right? what it lost to. Yeah, he should have. I mean, Paul Newman got the Oscar for the color of, for color of money, but he really got it for this. He he. Oh, yeah. This was. The way he played this, he was not a likable character, and and you'd like to. I like to think that his that scene that Sean talked about when he's in the hospital room taking the Polaroids and he slumps down in that chair. SX seventy Polaroid. By the way. He's doing it. Everything he's doing, even though he would be disbarred if he got caught, was for the right reasons, and it was his redemption. And that last scene is powerful because she's in the hotel room drinking. He's not answering the phone drinking coffee, which means he's going one way. She's going the other way, which was a form of redemption for him, which I, I just loved. And he was just so I mean, half the movie, he's just beaten down. And it's 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 one one bad thing after another happened to him. But and the way done. Sidney Lumet frames the scene where Jack Warden tells him. That oh yeah, he's doing that scene. And the look on out, his face. No, no look. I'm talking about the wide shot. Oh, yeah. from above. From yeah. above, like where stops. he's telling him on the street, and he just the, the yeah. way he backs off. You're like, oh my god, he just got the worst. Well, then when life. he walks into that place, and you slaps her. He's right. gonna. You figure he's gonna slap her. I mean, he belted her, and right. she flew across. You know, uh, that was a powerful scene. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love this movie. Uh, Lindsay Krauss, that scene. I just wanted to be a nurse. I love yeah. that. The the little, I mean, Chris probably liked it because they did some filings, which he's really into in these courtroom movies. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know you like that. Motion. But the backroom discussions between the uh the Vatican, not the Vatican, the Archdiocese mm-hmm. and and James and James Mason was oily and he was just there's a scene the, he does though when when uh the doctor that's to his right realizes that that testimony was going to be yeah. struck and the yeah. doctor goes and congratulates him What's and james that? mason pulls his arm away right. from him and just ignores it because it was like, lied to that not because james well, mason knew what was going on right and he didn't want to show it and that's that's the beauty of this film this film yeah. has so many tiny little elements that happen that are beautiful acting moments and uh but even, Newman, like i said I mean, even the guys even the guys all the young lawyers that he has that smarmy thing about and he's black and james yeah. mason goes i don't want to hear about that i don't want to talk about it but hey let's put a black let's put a black right. lawyer on this thing and the guy goes right yeah. but this is newman's movie i mean newman of course it carries this movie 100 percent, you know and his chemistry with uh warden was great i think uh, he might be a little too charismatic though really if you think about you know it what? i would have I liked to see i imagine a mickey rourke doing this or who looks down and out no, it'd be or, like a Dustin some, Hoffman, some other... a Dustin Hoffman, uh, even a Pacino. But but no, I don't I don't agree with that. I don't think you could talk about his ice blue eyes, but but I mean this was I, I mean he was No, this you know, is his, his movie. Soul I'm not, was I am not he taking not, it away. He was yeah, amazing. Amazing. He was. And so was Bruce Willis in the final courtroom yes, scene. That's right. Right behind the That was the last right time I watched because you know, every time I watch, I'm like, I'm gonna watch for Bruce Willis. Bruce he's Willis. in the back. He's got yeah, hair yeah, in the back. He's yeah. in it. And every oh, time really? I watch it, yeah. I'm so caught up in the action. And the guy from um, Saul is in there, Tobin, too. Oh, Tobin, Tobin Bell. Bell. Yeah, right. Oh, that's funny. And he's right there as well. But this, you know, right before we um, did our first podcast tonight, I turned it on for the fourth time, and I just went to the very end, and I'm like, Okay, I'm going to watch for Bruce Willis. Yeah, he's, he's to the right. He's to the right of Paul Newman. He's when they call there. the verdict. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. just pulled up a screen cap, and yes, you can see them. And no, I never in a million years saw so, that in the movie. So I did a movie. I was I was an extra in a movie called Concealed Enemy, starring Edward Herman. <laughs> and I was directly behind Edward Herman when they r- did the verdict, right? So, and I've seen the video of it. So here's Edward Herman. My hand's Edward Herman. As soon as they announced the verdict, I went like this. <laughs> <laughs> just so I'd get on camera. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Well, Bruce Willis went on to uh, play uh, his son in uh, Nobody's Fool. Yeah. Paul Newman. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, they just had uh, uh, Bruce Willis just came out and made a public uh, uh, like uh, Instagram or something. But his his uh, whatever he's got is much worse, and he's yeah, almost it's bad. getting it's bad. <laughs> what did yeah, it like? It a, a and they got buy. moonlighting on Hulu. They're playing moonlighting on Hulu. moonlighting. Oh, is nice. moonlighting first season finally, of moonlighting, yeah. spectacular. Yeah. yeah, they finally so, put that out. Yeah. My so Gelfine. back to the verdict. Yes. Um, uh, the verdict is not guilty. <laughs> not guilty, baby. Not guilty. Yeah. This That's my opinion. Chris. Excellent. Yeah. For no, the two I'm people who never guilty. saw it. Not guilty. I love the bittersweet ending. You know, like you said, they win, but it's not it's not like some overwhelming triumph where he and Charlotte Rampling are together at the end. It's it's uh, it's really great. It's re- really tempered. You know, I like every it time you win one thing, you lose or something else. Yeah, That's yeah I would say, well, I he would was say a that. huge baby. He was a huge baby with no wonder she had that scene with him in that hotel where he was curled up in the bathroom. And she's like, I can't deal with failure. I mean, and this is yeah, I, I can't know. do it failure anymore. Right. But I, but he was very charismatic when he did oh, it. He's very charismatic. Come when on, he was curled up in the fetal position. Come on. Drew. Uh, I would also say not guilty. Uh, I prefer my Paul Newman with a side of Yul Brenner, but I still liked it. I thought it was uh it was good. It was Yul well Brenner. done. What does that mean? I don't Exodus, baby. Oh, oh, oh Exodus. Oh, Exodus. <laughs> But um, I, I you the know, chalice. Like I said, He's I'm, also in the chalice. But, the silver yes, chalice. That's true. I'm glad. I'm glad that I uh, that I saw it. It was uh, it was good. Um, uh, you know, Sidney Lumet's movies are a certain kind of tone. This was definitely more of a Sidney Lumet movie than a Mammoth movie. And I I just think it's interesting that you can tell it's a Sidney Lumet movie across what like 30, 40 years of his career or whatever, good or bad. It has a certain feeling to it, and. Um, you know, he he uh, he did. Uh, I feel like everybody did great work. And, you know, I mean, I don't know what else do you want from a movie. Yeah, no, yeah. Exactly. I, I do want to say one more thing about Paul Newman. I recently saw a documentary about him. It was multi-part, and it seemed like, particularly through like the fifties and the sixties, he was constantly being compared to Marlon Brando, like the poor man's Marlon Brando. It's like. Every script he got had Marlon Brando's fingerprints on it and all. And to me, I never even looked at him as the same kind of actor, frankly. You know, to me, Newman was, you know, and I will say I think Newman's had the more substantial career. Although, you know, because he made fewer bad films than Marlon Brando. After a while, Marlon Brando didn't care anymore. But, you know, Mark, he did, I certainly did iconic roles, Marlon Brando. But, and he always, even when he was in that crappy movie, like the one we watched, Island of Dr. Moreau, he just still couldn't take your eyes off him. But yeah, if I was going to swap Newman out was, Brando from that movie, I'd, I'd put James Mason in before I'd put um, Paul Newman in. So I don't yeah. see that connection either. <laughs> well, Paul yeah. Newman did like the Towering Inferno. You think about the stuff he did. It, you know, it's that just was, Paul you know, Newman. Everybody's got that movies. was like everyone for loved me, that movie. For me, it's a combination of The Sting and Butch yeah, Cassidy Sting. and the Sundance Kid that did the it for me. For me. Well, well, him and Robert, Robert Redford. And my favorite cool hand Luke I know. And, cool I Hand say, Luke yeah, is yeah, amazing. But that's, they're like but me. That's, I, I didn't discover man. Cool Hand Luke till after I saw Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid mm-hmm. and after I saw The Sting. And I go, oh, this guy. And then you see Cool Hand Luke and it's like, holy shit, this guy is amazing. The other well, also, it's not the healthiest choice, but his that Caesar dressing is like really good. Like really, <laughs> Chris. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say I don't know. It's an it's another movie. You know, uh, Martin Ritt directed HUD, but he also directed a movie called Ombre, based on oh, yeah. the Leonard novel. Yeah. That movie is it, it's damn near perfect. Um, it has some of the greatest dialogue you'll ever hear in your life, and you just want to be Paul Newman as John Russell. Like you just want to be him because he's. He's just amazing in film, and it's a great movie. And if you guys have never seen Ombre, uh, you got homework. Even, but you know what's the thing about uh, Newman that I like? Even in bad films, he's still good. Oh yeah. You know what I mean, like there are some actors that who are great actors who kind of phone it in every now and then. Yeah. I never got that from him, and even in his bad films that he's embarrassed about, like the Silver Chalice, he's completely embarrassed about. He's but when you pro. watch it, he's actually not too bad in it. It's just the movie's so terrible. And we forgot the most important film he was in. Um, Slapshot. Oh, oh well, true. There you go. Good point. <laughs> Which was said. his favorite film. His favorite film was Mike Slapshot. Drop. Mike Drop. Nice Love one. Slapshot. That's a good call out. And he did his own skating. 
Yes. You yeah. got to like that. And swearing. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So, all right. There you go. Nice job. Nice. Uh, we don't know what we're going to do next week. We talked about, and we're coming up on Halloween. Should we? Yeah, I, I guess we Halloween. should. So here's, I guess, what's the theme? Just just pick your best horror. horror film. Or... Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. So yeah. we have the wheel. We'll spin the wheel. Who See who picks. Sean, I'm sorry. You're not on the wheel for next week because you're not going to be here. I apologize. Yeah, for those who haven't already watched the Indian film, you know, I will be having vocal cord, you know, operation. And you notice I've been losing my voice a bit. And, you know, I do say I sent Ralph a photo of my vocal cords, which he can feel free to include in this. It episode. looks like the asteroid in uh, Armageddon. Oh, really? Because <laughs> I thought it looked a little like a vagina, but whatever. I mean, you, well, I guess you know, what the do- you know, when I said to the doctor, am I, I don't know, just make it cut out. I said, I said, doctor, is that my throat or a vagina? To which he said, depends whether you're in prison. But um, <laughs> your doctor, wow. Jesus Christ! <laughs> so wow. listen to our audience. Do- actually, 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 that's Doctor Vinny, Doctor Vinny Boombat. Say, oh, his voice is going to be a little. Uh, he's, not a lot. Jesus. he's not going to have his voice for a while, so we're going to put a link down to his YouTube channel. Yeah, check so it you out. Can listen to his songs while he's going through this, so you can at least get, you know, you get to hear him. And uh, yeah, uh, I've been recording all these songs because literally. Yeah. I could lose my voice as a result of this, and I've read. Oh, don't even, don't even. Songs. Let's not even entertain that thought, no, Sean. No. All good thoughts. I okay? think it will get better. I think I have it like will. a ninety-six percent chance of a um, full recovery outcome. Okay, good. Full recovery, but and I. And my have dad, to be and they told my dad, week. you got a forty percent chance you're gonna have a heart attack, and he said to the doctor, "So what you tell me is there's a sixty percent chance I won't." Thank you for that. <laughs> I'll never forget that. That guy. Awesome. All right, that guy. All right, let's go to the wheel. All right, so we're going to spin this for the next horror film for Halloween, yeah? That is a good-looking wheel, Ralph. There you go. Handsome. Boom, ba dum boom. John, any predictions? And nope. I made my prediction. Right on the oh, oh, the hair comes through. Do, 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 do. Hey, new photo. Full head of hair. Wow, look at that. What a stud, man. Okay. I got to put a new photo up there. All right, Chris. Hey. I'm you don't know what you want to pick, do you? Not not off the top okay. of my head right, right. now. I gotta, but I it will be a horror in, film. Yes, I've got one in mind. I'm trying to remember if I've talked about it before. Chris, is it is it a horror movie or torture porn? Because I really... No, it's a horror movie. Okay, because I cannot watch torture porn. That's no, good to know. Porn. Yeah. What movie? Throw it out there. You, you think oh, we've already... No, let, what? Oh, no. We haven't it done that follows. one. The it follows? Follows? Is that the clown oh, one? No, no, it, no, no, it is the clown one. It, it follows, follows is not much better. It follows. I never heard of it. Oh, it's really man. Good. That is a terrific movie. I it saw really it is. in the theater and it freaked me out. Yes. And it's, it's, one of the producers yeah. of that was on paper going to produce my film, I, John. <laughs> Come on. Will you stop you doing that? Can. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's talking to Daryl. Oh, by the way, I was talking to Daryl Zanuck last week. Sean, I was in uh, uh, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania this weekend for the uh-huh. uh, uh, Halloween festival. And there was a big uh, uh, Friday the 13th show five convention. Episode, really? uh, yeah, the fifth one. Isn't that the one we had our guy yeah. on? Yeah, that's all we did. Yeah. He was not at the convention because I would have gone to the convention if he were there. But uh, yeah, they I had shot a, big... a little remote. I did not, and I would have if I had gone in. They had a yeah. big uh, a Halloween. You guys could have gone to a Dollar Tree together or something. That would have been yeah, fun. Yeah, it would have been good. So <laughs> anyway, all right. So uh, next week, Chris will bring the horror film. Might be it follows. Might be another one. Uh, but we'll see, right? Yep. That's all right. Great. Let's do a round of what you watch. Let's right. start with John. Um, okay, I am on. I only have uh, seven episodes left of Better Call Saul. Wow, fantastic show! Uh, the woman Rhea Seaborn is that her name? Yeah, Seahorn. Yeah. What a Seahorn. are you in love with her or what? I'm not in love with her, but oh, her character I... arc. And it's funny because the last episode they were playing the Days of Wine and Roses, which is a foreshadowing, I assume, 
that uh, she is going down a very dark path, but it's fantastic. If you have not seen it, it's it's much slower than Breaking Bad, but it is a uh, all the callbacks to Breaking Bad is wonderful. The other thing I watched, uh, and I don't know why this has been coming up on YouTube for me, but I decided to watch the movie again. One of my favorite sci-fi, really strange movies, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth mm -hmm. Dimension. Just a whack movie, but all these videos have been coming up about the making of it, and and Peter Weller like just did an interview about it, and they show there's one video that came up the the after you know the credit scene where they're in the water place and that would do 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 do. I, I just love that movie. It's just a crazy movie. If you haven't seen it? Check it out, but don't look for any logic in it. It's got a great cast: Christopher Lloyd's in it, Peter Weller obviously plays Buckaroo Banzai, and he's got the best line ever. Remember wherever you go there you are love that movie so that's what i'm watching what's that right. kind of, what, what what's that watermelon melon for i'll tell you later. yeah exactly jeff gold <laughs> what's that watermelon for i will i'll tell you later, tell you later. that's a great hey, and you know what's crazy about that one is the novelization of that film is terrific really it's because it actually it goes off in all these little crazy directions and has all these factors and you know what else is funny um, if you watch that film and in the credits, it says uh, Buckaroo Banzai will return yeah. in Buckaroo Banzai versus the World Crime League. Yeah, uh, that that script was taken and turned into Big Trouble in Little China. Really? Huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. Know that Why that didn't they make the sequel? Do you know? Because it didn't make any money. First, first uh, one didn't. Well, you know, nobody you know, watched that one. It was a strange movie. You know what? A, a lot really of those bizarre film. A lot of those later, like Die Hard movies. We're not Die Hard movies. Right. Yeah, you know, they were yeah, just yeah. Right. normal action scripts that they said, "Well, we need another Die Hard movie." Yeah, you know they didn't, and they just you know. Yeah, got Steve is the guy lucked out with that kind of thing too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, Drew. So uh, before we talk about what I watched, which I know John is excited about that every week, uh, is how long will I take? I get it. Uh, two big deaths this week, uh, Piper Laurie and Suzanne Summers. Yeah. Two huge Come deaths. Come and knock on her door. Some sort of formative uh, ladies in horror filmmaking and growing up as a boy, I guess. And, and masturbation. So, yeah, I, you said it. I didn't disagree. Um, but, you know, Piper Laurie terrified Which one, me. Piper Laurie or Suzanne Piper Summers? <laughs> Piper well, Laurie terrified me. Either. Piper Laurie <laughs> terrified me from Carrie through yeah. you know, how unsettling she was in Twin Peaks and all that kind of stuff. And Suzanne Summers, I mean, you know, fitness legend. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask you guys. I watched. I finished watching a show. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys a question, and if you know the answer, it's okay. You can say it. Did you know that diarrhea is hereditary? Absolutely not. I did not know that. No it runs in your genes. Oh, what the hell? That is a line from uh, The Last of Us, an impossibly dark zombie yeah. uh, series on um, Great on Mason. Max yep. that is really excellent with Pedro Pascal and uh, I cannot remember her name, Bella, the little girl from She's Game of fantastic Thrones. Her own kingdom. She's fantastic. I mean, it's just, it's it's so good. I, I've never played the game. Um, I, I don't have a PlayStation. Uh, I understand it is very faithful to the game in a lot of the story beats and also uh does its own thing um like um uh, a couple of the characters are combinations and things like that and i i just thought it was just so well done it cost a hundred million dollars to make nine episodes or whatever it was all the money is on the screen and uh, i look forward to another season although i felt bad because she's only in the first i think three episodes but I was, I, if, if you had made me go to court with Paul Newman, I would have sworn that the, the woman that was with Pedro Pascal uh, was Carrie Coon. It was actually Anna Torv. Uh, they look the same. Excellent. She's, they she's really a woman, do. It's, it's she's the woman crazy. from uh, the Manhunter series on uh, Yeah, she's HBO. in Mindhunter. She was Mindhunter. in Mindhunter. Mindhunter, yeah, she's great. a lot great. of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I had heard that the third episode, which features Nick Offerman, was i think in murray bartlett was just one of the most moving hours of television ever Have you, and, so uh, you hadn't seen that or did you i had not it? seen any of it and and it was it's it's yeah. a it, for such an incredibly dark violent show about fungus zombies um it was really incredibly good and moving and satisfying and scary and it was actually the um the second cordyceps zombie project that we've looked at uh, that right. i've talked about in the um in the yippie Kaye extended universe uh, because the movie uh, "The Girl with All the Gifts" is also set in a world where fungus turns people. We did. Into we did talk about this when I brought up the the Last of Us 
six months ago. Talk, we talked we talked about the exact thing you just said because we, that oh, movie the, yes right yes that movie was so, the same i thought i thought it was um they have different takes on it and different versions of it they but do they're both they're both relentlessly bleak which yeah. i think is appropriate and the last of us has just got a such a great cast melanie she Linsky, everybody she amazing. holds that thing that young girl who plays that oh yeah she's incredible. incredible and i believe it got nominated for 25 emmys and it didn't win any of them and it got nominated across everything acting, but it's got the same problem everything. for me it had the same problem that uh, the the um walking dead the walking dead had which is you know it's the same story over and over it's not the true. zombies it's the people it's the people that's true and it's just like okay i've seen this over I mean, and, and as much as i like i kind pedro, of felt that way about this i story. love pedro pascal and she she blew me She's away great. right well i will i will say that like in the in the fifth episode which is all about them you know trying to escape from um kansas city and melanie linsky and everything i was like you know we we really haven't seen any zombies in like two and a half episodes. And then at the end of that episode, they explode out of the ground and it's fantastic. So right. the, the show sort of, it, it was very well done how it did it. And it's by the guy who, um, who wrote Mason. the Chernobyl, uh, Craig Mason, who wrote the Chernobyl miniseries, which great. is overall excellent and has that one episode about shooting the, the radioactive dogs. That is one of the most upsetting things I've ever seen on HBO. And this is, uh, cl cut from the same cloth. So uh, I, I really dug it. And I'm glad that I waited. Um, I watched the whole thing in a weekend. Uh, I didn't I didn't want to wait for it. And I also was a little uh, kind of uh, not sure I wanted to watch it because it's so dark. Yeah. But uh, it was definitely worth it. And I'll, I'll definitely want to watch the second season, even though knowing this show, they probably do something like like Alien 3 and kill everybody you cared about in the first 10 minutes or something. So yeah, yeah I do we'll want see. to say one thing about Craig Mason for those. You read your script? Career. You read your no. script? Oh. But I will say no, that he's got a great podcast called Script Notes, which oh, is sure. on August about screenwriting. Yeah. And also, it's interesting with Chernobyl and The Last of Us is that Mason was spent 30 years as a comedy writer. Yep. He was doing like the scary movie franchise. He was doing the honey. What, what is the, the bachelor part? You know, that once where everyone goes to the bachelor party and the hangover. Hangover. Talking about the hangover. Hangover. hangover movies yeah yeah lots of successful stuff but not that tone that's for sure yeah exactly this is a totally different tone i loved chernobyl debbie look watched the first episode and found it so you know un, you know not something she would, would want to watch for pleasure so but you know i watched that was, that's a good series, series. i mean terrific. everything yeah that's a that's a good one chernobyl. but it is devastating yeah kelly yeah. did not uh, join me for last of us she's like i don't think i can do that right now and i think that was the right choice but uh, it's very good, and I recommend it if you haven't seen it now or six months ago. All right, Chris, what do you got? Um, well, uh, continuing the idea of Paul Newman movies I had never seen, I sat down and watched all three and a half hours of Exodus. Huh. Uh, good, which good timing. He's mentioned, yeah. And um, exactly, you know, it was funny. It's it's a super big epic film. It's funny, I've, I've always looked at the box. I've seen the, the book itself, and it always feels like um, and this may be a little reductive, but like James Michener's version of Israel, right? Like, you know how James Michener would always write these books called Alaska, Hawaii, Centennial, just these big epic novels. And I always got that vibe from it. Um, it's, it's got uh, Paul Newman's fantastic and it's got a lot of great performances in it. I, you know, it's super long, um, but that didn't, that doesn't bother me. Um, but you know it was really good it was shot and it's just gorgeously shot and everything i think my only disappointment with this is i we were talking about expectations about films is i thought it was more i thought that there was going to be more like uh political elements of how israel was formed right and while it definitely gets into elements in smaller groups and and what they do uh in their in their you know in their work to form, uh, you know, a Jewish homeland in Palestine and things like that. Um, I just thought there was going to be a little bit more about like the actual geopolitical forming of it than there was, but I really enjoyed it. In fact, I've got it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the audio book on loan from the Baltimore Public Library, which unsurprisingly has a ton of people trying to listen to it right now. <laughs> there's only one yeah. copy, as you would imagine, which would probably be normal. But there's like five people in front of me, so I'll get it like in the. Yeah, street. I don't. I don't know if you've. I don't know if you've read any. Um, any Leon Uris. Um, he wrote it. Topaz, which was made into a movie, and he oh, yeah, wrote. Um, film. 
Mila 18 and uh, a, a number of other things. And he, I mean, he's like a, a Michener kind of, you know, yeah. historical fiction, big spread stuff. And, you know, Exodus, it's one of those stories. I'm Jewish. I grew up, you know, that was one of the things that, and um, Kirk Douglas in Cast a Giant Shadow, which is much more interesting as to how that movie got made than actually being a good movie. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I like Exodus because I have a, obviously a personal connection to it, but also it is a huge Otto Preminger epic oh, movie, gosh, yeah. like you said. So like if you can watch it on a big TV, definitely do it. So yeah. And I Paul Newman, he's just awesome. Movie, yeah. Neil Brenner. Yeah. All right. Nice. All right. I just want to acknowledge Bruce Willis right now because this podcast was named basically from a line in a movie that he did because Die Hard, which I just adore. And I just want to, you know, throw good thoughts out there. This, listen, yeah. he's going through a tough time. His family's going through a tough time. Uh, I just think, I just love the guy. I love the stuff he did in, in the films. Obviously, this one and you know, just bun dozens of them. And uh, surrogates. Just, surrogates. <laughs> It's not so bad. Uh, anyway, I just want to throw fun. that out there. Okay, so I'm speaking of this Bruce Willis, and I, I, I'm rewatching a couple films and and going back. One of them happened this weekend because uh, on Saturday it was raining like crazy in Jim Thorpe. So Maria and I just spent the day in the hotel just watching movies all day long. Oh. And one of them I caught was, uh, and my guy, uh, Brian De Palma's The Fury. Oh yeah, and speaking of Kirk Douglas, which is the like only reason one. the movie got made because he had Kirk Douglas. I don't know if you guys have seen this film. Andrew Stevens, isn't that who's yes. in that? Yes, it is a freaking riot. Okay, I love this that is, movie. This is after he did Carrie. Um, as a matter of fact, the woman from Carrie uh, who married Spielberg, uh, Amy Irving, is in this yep. one as well. She plays is one it, of the mentalists. Is it Cassavetes? Cassavetes is a bad villain? guy. Yeah. Oh, God, but the best is Kirk so Douglas, bloody. who just does not belong in this film. But nope. the only reason the film got made is because they got Kirk Douglas. And you got to, it's just, there's some scenes that just crack me up. It's, it's De Palma at his best and worst at the same time. I loved it. And the other one I watched. Well, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like scanners, except yes. like way more acid. Yeah. Cause, cause and... Cassavetti's head blows off in this one too. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's just fun. Yeah, if you like to it's palm, that's a it's minor great. one, but it's fun. And then I I've been, uh, and snake eyes, the fugitive has had oh, a big yeah. run. Um, and I've been watching a lot of, uh, stuff on YouTube and how they thought, uh, both, um, Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones thought what this is going to end my career. This movie is going to end my career. And it turned into what it turned into. And I, and I've been, I've been, I watch it and then I watch it with the director's track and I listen to all this stuff with Tommy Lee Jones and the guy and Andrew Davis who directed it, who just came off of under siege, which is the reason Tommy Lee Jones got the, the part in, um, the, the fugitive is because he did such a great job saving that film from the debacle it would have been if it was just if it was just steven seagal so it's just it's, it's funny just because fun. i i wonder is that the end of andrew davis's career because he did other what, stuff after that yeah, but what I did mean, he do i don't know was, i haven't heard he did chain reaction which was <laughs> Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves. Uh, right. rachel right. vice saving oh. uh morgan right. freeman from right. some power yeah, he's sort, of, he sort uh -huh. of like mctiernan who did die hard and never really you know, i like the viking movie what do you mean you mctiernan know, who just did die Hard? did he do stuff he did Predator. 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 He did uh, Hunt, for Red Hunt for an October. Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. God. I, I, what is he did the uh, what's the what's the he never read one of your scripts, so you're dismissing him. What's the yeah, chess so movie? To... What's the movie about the the guy who steals paintings and plays chess? It was a remake oh, of yeah. uh, um, the Thomas Crown Affair. Thomas Crown Affair. Okay. That That's really McTiernan. And okay, Jones. I'm going to concede that. And the okay. Warrior. <laughs> yeah, Thirteenth but... Warrior. I love that movie. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Hey, and also you didn't ask me, but I saw a film I know Ralph would like. Was the original? Um, I was just watching today the original um, Longest Yard. Oh, well, that's the only. Around. There is not. Is there another Longest Come Yard? Come on, that's a great movie. And you know what? The thing is, I, I kind of want to see the Sandler one again because oh. Burt Reynolds is so. You know when he's having to fight with his girlfriend at the beginning. I mean, he is. He just hits like, her. So he's like, he really hits her. He is really rough. But in the seventies, that didn't matter. That was fine. Uh, you know, but nowadays you watch it's like, oh my God, they did this. No, when Paul Newman yeah. smacks Rampling oh, yeah. in that bar, that's yeah. like, what the what? You can't yeah. do that, right? Yeah, and everyone's like going to grab and she's like, let him go. You know, Sean, did did. I not let you say what you watch or did? No, you didn't. I skipped you. 
Yeah, this is you know my last one before my operation. <laughs> oh, wait, wow. but I but I didn't <laughs> did I skip you? Yeah, you did. Oh, what you watch? That's how you play it up, baby. What you watch? You give him some extra time. I just man. watched <laughs> um, I watched um, Burt Reynolds in the longest yard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought I went through. We you. get That's... to hit the guards. You know, I mean, Mean Machine. Crew, crew, I think I broke crew. his effing neck. I think yeah, he I think he broke his effing neck. You know, that woman he hits in the beginning was uh, one of the models on Price is oh, Right. One she of was cute. That Price woman was right. gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. She was those also 70s, an invasion of the B girls. Those 70s girls were beautiful. Come on. Yeah. But he yeah. was so, he's, I mean, he is so, uh, you know, that's when he was at his. Uh, Burt Reynolds? Like. Yeah, like yeah. super masculine, like deliverance, you know. He was so good in that. That movie is such a good movie because it's a funny movie, but it had real serious stuff in it when his buddy gets torched. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. and then at the end, where you think he's going to get shot, you know? Yeah. A and Eddie Albert's great in that. You know, put this in your trophy case. I yeah. love that movie. No, you know, and it's just shocking that Burt Reynolds actually appears in the. Adam Sandler, right? yeah, which was a bad money. movie. Yeah. It's a bad movie, but he had, you know, that's Bert being Bert. You had to do that. Money. You couldn't. What was that? So he needed the money. He can't live on all those Navajo Joe, you know. Well, he was a guy. He, he didn't want to do boogie nights. He he had he wanted he nothing. He, he, he didn't want anything his, to do with boogie he nights. Fired his agent after they finished. Yeah, the and he was great in that movie. Didn't yeah, he get like an Oscar he, nomination like for it? Yeah, it. he did. He and, yeah. and should have won it actually. Did you Should anyone check out his last film where he I was did. going? Where he plays himself. What's that called? It was. It was. I mean, the last it was movie star. I think it's called the last movie star or something like that. Yeah, knowing that he had died, it is heart wrenching. It it's heart wrenching. It, and watching him talk to his younger self, it's just. It's. It's. I mean, it was his life. It was really not as good as Nicolas Cage when he's kissing himself in uh, his movie. What? <laughs> the the unbarrel. Yeah, that one. Which is great. Which is another <laughs> great movie. I love Nick Cage. All right, welcome back, Drew. Yeah. Everything okay? Yeah, a little animal management, but we're okay. okay. All right, so we did. We gave Sean an opportunity to say what he watched. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I skipped Sean, but there we we'd, go. We'd ask everyone to throw out some good vibes, Sean way, Sean's way, and I think you can do that best by subscribing, hit the notification <laughs> button, smash the like button, smash and share it. it. Give him, I think give him some inspiration to come. I back. think that would help Sean. Pull can't the, hurt. It cannot hurt. Recovery. Yeah, I, or know, just buy one of his scripts. Somebody out there buy one of his scripts, please. If we don't get 3,000 subscribers, I don't know if I'm going to pull through <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Don't even joke that. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys will never get them. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, how pitiful would that be if we don't get them now? Oh, oh my God. no. That's so don't sad. People would have to, people would have to watch Auntie the show. invited Auntie and I out for our last please. meal. What? <laughs> I can't right. believe Ralph skipped over you. I thought wait, I thought I hit you on the first. No, one, you got a lot again. going on, Ralph. I get it. I totally. I'm get very it. busy. Ralph, why right. do we have the show out? <coughs> oh, okay. All right. Having said that, uh, so Chris, you'll bring something next week. Let yeah. us know. As I soon thought you, as you told can. us it follows. Isn't that what you? No, want he's to watch? thinking about it. He didn't say. I tell you, do um, that one because that one's terrific. If, if uh, anyone uh, hasn't seen, it yet, I have I not seen. It. I'll let you know about a movie. Okay. Awesome. What's What's option B then? I don't know. I, just, I don't want to lock my. No, phone. no. Take Phantasm. time. To think about it. Don't rush. You know, you might you might have an epiphany. So pick. Yeah. pick Phantasm two. So better. no theme. It's just a horror film. Boom. That's it. You don't have to. It's Halloween. So something scary. Something. You know me. I'll be a Universal monster movie. Oh God. I the the whole, yeah. By the way, I bought that whole collection. Twilight. It's a great collection. I bought it. Twilight. I bought the whole. Do you no, watch the no, documentaries? It's... Movie, I'm going to. I haven't yet. Movie. That's the uh, best part of those, Ralph. The documentaries are phenomenal. Oh, the other movie I watched in the hotel room was Fright Night. The oh, original Fright, Fright Night. Night. The original was good. Oh, the second. Yeah. You have to have faith for yeah. that to have work. Guys, wait, have you guys seen the remake? No. Yeah. I did not like it. The remake, the remake wasn't is, good. The remake Chris is Sarandon really was good. good. Chris Sarandon was oh. great in that movie. I don't think the Fright Night remake being good takes anything away from the original. It's no, no, but I just, I just didn't, didn't like it. I didn't like it. Oh, I like Roddy McDowell. Terrifying. Roddy McDowell was great. David, you check Tennant. out YouTube. There's a there's David a, two weeks ago they did a panel with uh, the actress from Fright Night. William there Ragsdale. Was, yeah, was yeah he, he was the guy in there, right? Yeah. yeah. My favorite Roddy McDowell horror movie is The Legend of Hell House. Oh, Ooh, God, and my, I got oh, it. We saw that. Yeah, catch is yeah. House of Usher by Mike Flanagan. Mine is Lord Love a Duck. That's on Netflix right now. 
Roddy McDowell, Lord Love a Duck. Chris, you you also might want to consider um, bringing a movie called um, Concealed Enemies Part Four: The Verdict. <laughs> it's supposed to be very good. Is uh, it's a PBS. trial of Alger Hiss, yes, the spy, uh, played by uh, Edward Herman. So from the we were in that boys, courtroom for fifteen sequel. hours. Let's do the scene That's again. Let's see the that. verdict again. Fifteen hours. I was in. What well, was the verdict? Guilty or not guilty? Oh, he was guilty. Okay, ready. Here's the scene, John. Ready? Show me yeah. Edward okay. Herman's hand again. Okay, here's. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have. What's the verdict? Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. See. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> See. All right, everybody. Thanks for that, Ralph. Right. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Have a good week, everybody. <laughs> hey, guys. Sean, seriously. Sean, good luck, good luck. My friend. Good I'll luck. be thinking Thank about you, all. you okay? I appreciate good it. Good luck, Sean. Can you, uh, can, you, can you bring your yeah, throat yep. in, a, will you bring in a jar for us? Will they say they're going to they're gonna have to do a biopsy on it, but I hope they give me some. Maybe I'll put it in a necklace. I was going to say, you can nice. make it into jewelry. Earrings, well, you're probably going to be out of it, so make sure yeah, Debbie, Sean, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll animate Debbie, it for the show. Have Debbie uh, <laughs> keep us posted, Sean, okay? <laughs> yeah. Ralph, just flash at the end what my throat looks like. I am not like going to do that. <laughs> like do it. Just we shove a camera banned. up your ass. Just, It'll just, look the same. Just watch asteroids. Um, I'm, I'm getting the same thing. The big giant asteroid. That's I got a picture of my like. colonoscopy. We can use that. It looks exactly All right, everybody. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night.